There's never a dull moment when it comes to Minnesota sports. Rather, it's positive or negative. The Yankees have swept the Twins. Minnesota Sports Chat has you covered. Talking nothing but Minnesota sports all year long. It's time now for the soon-to-be award-winning, if only in his own mind, Minnesota Sports Chat with your host, Ross Brendo. Well, a little bit later on in the week than originally planned, but life happens. Welcome inside edition number 206 unofficially of the soon-to-be award-winning Minnesota Sports Chat presented by Beans Coffee Company. Use the promo code SPORTSCHAT at coffeebybeads.com to save on some delicious small batch coffee roasted in Mankato, Minnesota. John Harrison, Johnny, John Bob, he can be found on Matthew Collar's Purple Insider, does some work for Bring Me the News. You'll hear him on all the Minnesota United action all season long on 1500 ESPN with the pre- and post-match show, and he joins minnesota sports chat right now johnny you know this by now you're one of my all-time favorite people it's great to see you again it's great to see you as well ross how about excited what about main event john harrison would you would you go i'll take it i'll take it i'm I'm not i'm not on the level of main event jay uso but i'll take it so for those we've moved on from the kevin owens comparisons though no we have not you still still there yeah oh it's still there it's almost (laughs) now that you've you've trimmed up the beard a little bit it's still there for those Watching on YouTube, Johnny is supporting a main event Jay Uso Yeet hoodie. He told me it was either that or is it an LA Knight shirt or hoodie? What is it? It was a LA Knight sweatshirt. Was there a, I chose this one. Was there a sale at WWE.com that I missed? It wasn't a sale, but I decided to <laughs> splurge some cash well, over you know, the holidays. Allegedly, WrestleMania will be here, what, next year? Two years? Well, Vegas doesn't swipe it from us. Well, Vegas is swiping everything these days. Yeah. I hope it comes. I've it, heard from people who may know a thing or two that it that it should be here, but we'll see. Well, at the end of the day, it'll be here at some point, right? Hopefully, yeah. You would think. As long as, Lester, I mean, as long as Lester Bagley doesn't <laughs> screw us over again. <laughs> Sorry, Lester. Don't say it until WWE says it. That's all you got to do. It's the only rule. Come on, Lester. <laughs> Uh, well, we said Vikings, so let's start there. I got a couple <laughs> teed up for you. We've I talked about this the last time you were here. You're, you know, you are my Minnesota United correspondent, but you are just as plugged in on the Minnesota Vikings, thanks to uh, one of your many jobs. So we'll start there. Kirk Cousins, Justin Jefferson, and Daniil Hunter, Johnny. Those are your three names. Kirk Cousins, mm-hmm. Justin Jefferson, and Daniil Hunter. How many of those three are on the Vikings roster week one of next season? If you want my answer first, I'll give it to you, or you can just take it. You can go first. I think it's one. Yep. I think it's Justin Jefferson, perhaps Kirk Cousins. Judd Zolgad persuaded me as recently as today that Daniil Hunter's probably pretty unlikely, which I agree with. I think he'd like to be back here, but I think somebody's going to offer him a bag of money that because he took a bad deal with the Vikings on his second contract, or I guess technically his first contract, the first one, he had a chance. Correct. Yeah. His first one revision is history. He should have been drafted a lot higher than he was. Yeah. So I think somebody's going to throw him a bag of money and he'll have to take it, which he should. The Vikings, they'll get this contract language or whatever it is figured out with Justin Jefferson. Kirk Cousins, I guess that's still the elephant in the room. I'm going with one. It sounds like that's your number two. Yeah, I think it's one. I think it's Justin Jefferson. I think Kirk Cousins is as good as gone. I think Atlanta is where I'm leaning towards. They are going to offer him the bag because they've got a young roster that is ready to win, and there is no more win-now quarterback on the free agent market uh, than Kirk Cousins. You can say Baker Mayfield's there, and he's a little bit more long-term of an option, but with what Kirk Cousins showed the last season and a half before his Achilles injury, uh, he is as good of an option as any team will get, and Atlanta is stacked to the gills, and they are ready to compete for a Super Bowl right now, especially in an incredibly weak NFC South. That that division is there for the taking, and 
uh, as as has been pointed out quite a few times, the Atlanta o- owner isn't getting any younger, so he's going to want to win now. He's not going to want to draft a quarterback and develop them. Uh, this is much like the Detroit Tigers situation from years past, where the owner just wants to win now and will spend all the money he can to win now. I think that's where Kirk Cousins will land, plus the familial connections down in Atlanta. Lean me to that. And I think the, the steam around... Uh, Daniil Hunter to the Bears is real. I think they're very interested. It wouldn't surprise me if they throw in throw in a nice, decent offer, but there's also a handful of other teams that would want a pass rusher who's coming off the season that Daniil Hunter did just did that will offer him way more money than the Vikings are going to be able to offer him. And with the limited cap space they have right now, Vikings will just say sayonara and they will look for other pass rushing help elsewhere, but they will offer all the money in the world to Justin Jefferson. I do not believe he's going anywhere. This is so off topic, but anytime we bring up the Atlanta Falcons and you brought up Mr. Blank, I think he's the Home Depot guy, right? That's where all his money comes from. If he wants a Super Bowl so badly, he should have been down on the sidelines telling Matt Ryan and Kyle Shanahan, quit snapping the ball with 20 (laughs) seconds left on the play (laughs) clock, you idiots. Run the ball some more. Stop passing it. Oh, my gosh. John, every time I think about that Super Bowl, it gets me worked up, and I have no skin in the game. Yeah, like well, I'm a Matt Ryan fan. Like, <laughs> I've I've liked Matt Ryan since the beginning, oh. and that's I feel so bad for him that like it's not it's not like sure he's the quarterback on the field. Part of it part of it him is to blame, but he's not the one calling pass play after pass no. play after pass play when they're up twenty seven to three or whatever the heck it was. No, he gets like, some of the blame, but a lot of the blame he shouldn't even has to go on. God, what was their coach's name? Something Smith, white-haired guy. Yeah, I can't remember. I, I can't remember. Yeah. Or was that Dan Quinn? Was Dan Quinn? Dan Quinn was their coach that year, right? Uh, let me check. Yeah, look that look look that up. I feel like Doogie <laughs> talking to Declan. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe Declan can look that up for us. Um, yeah, some There's someone in their car who, who some, knows the answer. Absolutely. Just screaming at their absolutely. Radio right now. Some of that's yeah, on Dan the Quinn. head coach. Some of that's on Matt Ryan. Some of that is on Shanahan. You just have to know the game situation. Whatever. That's nice pull. Dan Quinn. That, thank you very much. That's neither here nor there. But that also, by the way, we're still up by eight with a chance to win the game. If we just hand the football off and our field goal kicker makes a field goal, instead we call a pass play. Matt Ryan gets sacked, and we can't even do that. And the rest is history. Okay, moving on. Why, moving think that's on. Why from Kyle that. Shanahan is built as as built a lethal of a running game as he has over these past couple years in San Francisco. You know what Kyle Shanahan has become? For the longest time, it was Phil Mickelson's the best golfer to never win a major, right? It's Kyle Shanahan. Kyle Shanahan. Until he wins it. Kyle Shanahan, and this is not hyperbole, he has literally changed the game of football at the NFL level with his concepts, what Mm -hmm. what he does with players, how he roster builds, how they were able to overcome giving up a haul to get Trey Lance, and they still put a Super Bowl contending team on the field. And it's not necessarily all his fault, but he is going to be the guy that you're going to remember for the two San Francisco 49ers Super Bowl losses. And to put you at ease, when I think of the Atlanta Falcons, it was 28 to three that they blew. Yes. I think of him before I think of Matt Ryan. Yep. The blood he's is a, on his hands for three Super Bowls, Johnny. He's Philadelphia Andy Reid. Yes. Yeah. Puts together amazing roster after amazing roster after amazing roster and puts together great season after great season after great season, but can't get over the hump. But then he goes to Kansas City and then gets the greatest quarterback to ever play the game. And all of a sudden he's got Super Bowl after Super Bowl after Super Bowl and is now being considered one of the greatest coaches of all time. But you think about his Philadelphia days, this was his reputation. Yeah, they lost four straight NFC Championship games, I mm-hmm. believe. Or no, they went to four, but they finally kicked the door down on the fourth or fifth. I can't yeah, I, I, I can't remember. Then they, they went to the Super Bowl with Terrell Owens who had broken his foot like yeah. three weeks like earlier. And then they lost to... Uh, that guy, Tom Brady. So you said As something. We'll get back to the Vikings here shortly. You said something I'm seeing a lot of people go with, and I think I can agree with it. Patrick Mahomes, greatest quarterback ever, greatest quarterback ever to do this. Okay, that might be true. I'm willing to give that. But Tom Brady's still the most accomplished, perhaps yeah. maybe still is the best. It just, to me, that hype, it that seems, that's really strong hyperbole. This early into Patrick <laughs> Mahomes' career. But I will say this, you know, Tom Brady went about 10 years before he got number four. So, I mean, Patrick Mahomes, I guess, technically does have a chance to get to seven, eight, nine, ten. 
I'd be shocked if he does. But yes, he is. I mean, he defines generational talent. I mean, I, it's I don't, ridiculous what he's done in oh, the first seven years of his career. It's, it's also insane. it's also incredible how he can he throws no look passes in the NFL. That's unheard of. That's unheard of. It's ridiculous. Okay, so now we'll circle back to the Vikings. Kirk Cousins, Justin Jefferson, Daniel <laughs> Hunter, all the way back. So you and I both think one will be back. In a perfect world, would you want more than one back? I think I'd want two. I'd want and, Daniel Hunter. I wouldn't want Kirk Cousins. Me too. And 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 here's the thing, Johnny. I'm not trying to rip on Kirk Cousins. I, I really yeah. am not. I Look, the best thing that could have happened to Kirk Cousins was that Brock Purdy didn't have that comeback against Green Bay, although I thank the good Lord that he did. But (laughs) if Brock Purdy didn't, there's a good chance we'd be talking about Kirk Cousins getting a one- or two-year deal to be with his buddy Kyle Shanahan in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. I've said numerous times, this will be literally probably the 300th time I've said it on this podcast, you can win a Super Bowl with Kirk Cousins. You absolutely can. It's just a lot harder to do. And the ship, no pun intended, for the Minnesota Vikings has sailed on that. If Kirk Cousins was going to do it with the Minnesota Vikings, it would have been in probably year one or two. Heck, maybe even three when they had a rock star, rock solid defense coming off of the Case Keenum year. That's not going to happen now. If Kirk, you Cousins, have to have the perfect roster for him. That's yes. my problem. Is that and you can't build, contract, you can't build you can't it right that. now. Yeah. Atlanta has that for him at various times throughout his career in Minnesota. He's had either the best defense. He's always had great passing weapons to throw to he's had great running games heck even the last year and a half he had a pretty decent pass blocking offensive line and still couldn't do it so you need the perfect roster around him and at his current salary whatever that may be you're not going to be able to build that especially here in minnesota right now atlanta has that i think that's the perfect situation for him to go in sunlight or sunset his career winning a super bowl philosophical question here would you be okay with the Vikings winning four to six games next year, if that four to six win season was because you drafted a quarterback and you played him right away. Absolutely. So yeah, there's, there's no question about it because uh, if you draft their quarterback and he is your guy, you fully believe in him and with how this, with, with what they've set up in the front office and with the new coaching staff, this is a this is a group that should be able to develop a quarterback that was brought in because they can develop a quarterback. Heck, they turned around Kirk Cousins to make him one of the most coveted prospects in free agency uh, this coming spring. So and he's got a gimp, think, he's got a gimpy uh, gimpy. And he's coming off an Achilles, a torn Achilles. So yeah, I think they can do it. I will I will give them kind of that that leeway, that time, uh, that time frame to develop a quarterback, even if it does mean a poor season. I'd still rather do it this way, though, even if it's still four to six wins. I would still rather. I'm of the theory. It's still better for these guys not to play right away unless they absolutely have to. The difference is this Vikings roster isn't so desolate that you would put said quarterback in there with absolutely nothing to work with. The offensive line isn't great. It's okay. The running game's abysmal. Hopefully that'll get better. The passing game, as far as receivers and tight ends, is fine. I'll just use the name that everybody else is using. I'm not saying it has to be him. I would rather bring somebody in like Ryan Tannehill and say, you are starting for this team until we are eliminated from playoff contention, whether that is week six or week 16. That's up to you, Ryan. The moment Mm -hmm. it's over, we're turning it over to the kid we took with the fifth overall pick, the 11th overall pick, the 20th overall pick, whatever let's it ends be up being. It's going to be the third. Let's let's hope so. That would be fun. <laughs> oh, that, that'd be incredible. That would Great be for content. That would be really fun. Great for content for both of what you and I do. But I, I still <laughs> believe who ruined this for everybody is a name that you already brought up. Prior to Matt Ryan and Joe Flacco, you almost always drafted a quarterback and made them sit four games, six games, a half a season, an entire season. Joe Flacco, Matt Ryan came in, had great rookie seasons, and ever mm-hmm. since then, very, there are very few Aaron Rodgers and Jordan Loves. Heck, there's so few of them. They've happened with basically the same team. You know, the Green yeah. Bay Packers. Let's Patrick Holmes is one of them. Let's Patrick Holmes weigh in an entire year. Dante Culpepper weighed an entire year. People forget that, but he did. Let's say it's J.J. McCarthy. It's Drake May. It's, it's Jane Daniels. You know, I'd rather just 
let them wait a little bit longer, marinate a bit longer. Is that wrong? No, I think that's a fair option. If you if you're able to be able to afford that, you you have to be able to afford a bridge quarterback. So pick your choice: Baker Mayfield, Gardner Minshew, uh, Ryan Tannehill. Like you said, pick your choice. Whoever you believe in, Minshew would be fun. Minshew would be fun. I I like the idea of Baker Mayfield. I like what I saw him in him last year last year in Tampa I think he matured which is definitely a part of his game that needed to happen is that maturity needed to come up and it certainly did uh so I I like him although he might be a little bit expensive um but if you're able to afford it and still be able to fill some of those holes on the defensive side of the ball where you've got a ton of holes that you need to fill then absolutely but if if it's going to come at the cost of you know adding some pieces on defense for Brian Flores to work with then I'm a little iffy but I like the idea of having a bridge quarterback to give that rookie some time to adjust to the NFL standard. You know, one way, excuse me, there's the sinus infection and uh, pneumonia acting up. One way to uh, refill your defense and not have to spend a lot of money is to not waste your first and second round pick on the defensive side of the ball and completely whiff on both of them. <laughs> that that would be a, a nice way, speaking yeah. of uh, Lewis Seed and Calvin Booth. <laughs> Or Andrew, what's I always Andrew forget Booth. Andrew Booth. I always think Andrew of the Booth basketball Jr. player. I always say Calvin Booth. Remember Calvin <laughs> Booth, the tall, lanky basketball player from Penn State, then played in the NBA for a while. Okay, let's shift away from the Minnesota Vikings. There'll be plenty of time to talk about the Vikings and the draft, and also free agency with that now looming just a few weeks away. Draft about two months from now. Now, as we record this podcast, it's it's Thursday, the twenty second. It'll likely drop on Friday the 23rd, so maybe there'll be some news. Maybe there'll be something you're privy to that you could tell me. Talk to me about your Minnesota United, the Loons, MNUFC. They open up this Saturday. Uh, Not only talk to me about the roster, talk to me about how we can be two days away on record date from match one of the season. We don't have a head coach. Yeah. How? Oh, boy, how? You got enough time here? We How long can we go here? Well, I was uh, hoping about another 10 minutes. Can, <laughs> can, can you do it in that? <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, it, it just was a drawn-out process. I mean, you, the club signed their new or went out and looked for a sporting director after after moving on from Adrian Heath. Because Is that what we're rewind. calling coach now, sporting director? No, that's the general manager. Okay, that's what I thought. Okay, yeah. thank you. So to rewind a little bit, under Adrian Heath, the entire soccer operation was run by him. He was the head of it. Mark Watson was there as the de facto sporting director, but he reported to Adrian Heath. Once they got rid of Adrian Heath, they wanted a separate sporting director director and a separate head coach. One uh, as basically just to kind of divvy up the responsibilities. And so they went out and searched for their sporting director first. They found their guy. It took a little bit to get him away from his previous club in Barnsley in England. Uh, Then paperwork got in the way because the visa process here in this country, if anybody knows it and and has experienced it, it's not easy. It's not a simple process. It's a very complicated process. Things happen and it will take time. So there was a delay of getting him over here. And once that finally happened, then they could start in earnest on the head coaching search. And that is underway. There are rumors and reports of who that may be. Um, We will see. I I like those rumors for sure, but I have not heard anything whether they are. Is know, it my guy Bruce Arena? No, dang no. it! No, he was uh, fired from New England Revolution last year for uh, less than good circumstances, to put it lightly. So it I'll wouldn't to, be Bruce Arena. I'll have to Google that. Yeah. So yeah, uh, that's how we get to the point where we don't have a head coach, a full time head coach in charge. Uh, two days ahead of the season. An interim coach is in charge right now, Cameron Knowles. He's our second interim coach of the season because the first one, Sean McCauley, left to take a head coaching job with Indy 11 in the USL Championship. Knowles has been around the club for a couple years now, has been coaching the MNUFC 2 side uh, for the past two seasons. So he knows the club. He knows what the new sporting director wants to put in place for his vision of how the team is going to play. They have been practicing and training with that all preseason and are ready to go. Is it possible things aren't moving quick enough on the head coaching front just because they're not caffeinated enough <laughs> at Loon's headquarters? Is that possible? Do they need some beans coffee, Johnny? It's possible. I mean, <laughs> they they were set on on wait and waiting and taking as long as they needed to to get their the right guy that they wanted. They weren't gonna 
They weren't going to rush to find it, even if that meant going into the season and going into a significant part of the season with an interim head coach. So they were determined to find their right guy. And by all reports, it seems like they found it. And now it's just whether uh, when that happens or not. Watch what I'm going to do right here. They, they don't just teach this at any broadcasting school. Are you ready, Johnny? Yeah. While the loons search for their right guy, you can be searching for your right cup of coffee at coffeebybeads.com and Beads Coffee Company, a proud supporter of Minnesota Sports Chat. I know you're proud of me, Johnny. There's that brown college education. There we go. There we go. I outlasted the college. I I knew I'd close it down. Do me a favor and check out coffeebybeads.com. That's coffeebybeads.com. I know once you're there, you'll see something that you like. Judd mentioned uh, the Mikado when he was on about a week or two ago. He's now sipping on that Mikado. He loves it. I'm thinking once you give them a try, you'll be like me and my guy Judd. I know you'll keep going back for more. Beans Coffee Company, they have roast and blends for every palate. They really do. Again, coffeebybeads.com. Order by the bag or set up a coffee subscription. Your cup of coffee is important, so drink the best around. Beans Coffee Company, they ship anywhere in the U.S., Free shipping on all orders of $35 or more. Use the promo code SPORTSCHAT, that is SPORTSCHAT, at checkout, and you'll save a little bit of cash at coffeebybeans.com. Talk to me about the roster, Johnny. Let me talk to you. Talk Let to me, me talk to you. Talk to me about the roster. Uh, roster similar, different. What are we going to see from the loons when they open up uh, just uh, literal hours from now on 1500 ESPN in the Twin Cities? Yeah. Uh, it is, uh, I think it's, yeet. you know, yeet. there's, so obviously the head coaching situation is going to have a lot of people down about what this team is able to accomplish, but it's still very much a talented roster that should be able to compete. You've still got outside of Lionel Messi, and I know MLS has been pumping up Lionel Messi since he joined the league and has basically forgotten about the rest of the league, uh, but outside of Lionel Messi, Emmanuel Reynoso is still the best number 10 in this league. And yes, he may be a little bit injured to begin the season, but as opposed to last season, he's here all season long for this club from the start. So you still got him, Timu Puki, who they signed last off season or last season in the middle of the season, has now got a full off season under his belt. He is with this club from the start. He's already developed a playing relationship with Emmanuel Reynoso. That one, that that pairing up top seems like it's destined to be a really good connection. We saw sparks of that last season, especially in that LA Galaxy game when he scored four goals in the home season finale. Um, and then you got Robin Lode returning, who's as who's a incredibly dangerous attacker, who's got a partnership with Timu Puki from their Finnish national team duties. Then Bong Hukle Hlongwani, as well as in the in the attack, he scored 17 goals across all competitions last season. 24 years old, I believe, this season. His third season in MLS, he's going. It feels like he's going to take another step up. Uh, this team is incredibly deep in the attack. They brought in some more defensive players for this new high pressing system, which means they're just gonna they're gonna attack the ball when they lose it. They're gonna go attack it higher up the field, try and get it back higher up the field. It's gonna ask their defenders a little bit, but Miguel Tapias, who was assigning last year. Uh, showed out really well as the partner alongside Michael Boxel. Then they brought in Victor Erickson. They drafted Hugo Bacharach in the first round of the MLS draft this this winter. So I think this team, despite the head coaching situation and all the turmoil and adversity that they went through through this offseason, is still a very good team that should compete in the Western Conference. Last season was a down season, obviously, missing the playoffs for the first time in a couple of years. It it's still a very talented, if not one of the most talented attacking units in the Western Conference. And as anybody who observes the observes MLS knows, the Eastern Conference is a beast this year. The Western Conference is very much more open. And I think there is room there for Minnesota United to be a really strong contender in the Western Conference. Obviously, not knowing who your head coach is. It, it's it's an issue. I get that. But is it also possible, Johnny, you're around the team uh, a, a fair amount. Is it possible the guys can use this as a bit of a rallying cry, you know, just to say, you know what, we know we're good and we're going to prove it independent of who the coach is. And they may even have a pretty good idea of who the next coach is going to be. But it, is it possible that, you know, for as much as I like to poke fun at it, is it possible that, Again, I know it's a big deal, but is it possible it's not as big of a deal as 
some of us casuals make it out to be that these guys will be just fine. Yeah, I don't think it's that big of a deal because there's a lot of stability with this club and with the the roster, at least, uh, that not a whole lot of parts have changed from last offseason or from last season. You still got all of the attack there. You've added, uh, I think you've added just one guy from New England in the offseason. You're getting Tani Oluwase back from loan in St. In uh, San Antonio, where he scored 17 goals in the USL Championship, just to step down from MLS. So you've even added more to your attack. You're bringing back Will Trap. The rest of the midfield, Kervin Arriaga, Hassani Dotson, Joseph Rosales, they're all still there. And then Michael Boxel is still there alongside the defense and Miguel Tapias. The the wingbacks, a little bit more of a question, uh, though they're the pretty much everybody from last year has returned. There's only a few guys who are mainly depth pieces haven't returned this season. So you and you still got Dane St. Clair in net. This is a team that is at least on the field very consistent and very stable. Off the field obviously not so much, but it is very much a very consistent team from what we saw last year. So I think this team knows that the players at least will be very comfortable playing with each other and they can use that and use that as their leadership until a new head coach gets installed. Allianz Field is still just a a, a oh, bleeping mate. rock star, isn't it? It's it's such a great place. It, it really is. It, if you're not a soccer fan or you haven't been there, I encourage people to go. I would be at best, as Johnny knows, a casual. I love going there, and I'm going to get there hopefully uh, early on in the season. But have you noticed? Look, it's going to be about 60 degrees for the home opener next week. You couldn't have asked for better weather on March 2nd in St. Paul. That's we're, amazing. We're kind of uh, riding a roller coaster here over the next couple of weeks. If you see it, so I think we have a couple 50s, maybe a 60 degree day early next week that we drop into the mid 20s and then we go back up again. Yeah. From everything that I've seen, it's supposed to be gorgeous for next Saturday. Love Home it. opener, 1 p.m. In the afternoon, just a great time to have some soccer, nationally televised soccer. It's going to be awesome. Get that little extra sunshine, too, by doing the 1 o'clock start time. I see. I'm going to need it. I've been in the, the house all week, all year. Yeah, look at you. I'm blinded. No, I'm, just, yeah. I'm just kidding. Uh, Working from home has its, has its drawbacks as well sometimes. <laughs> in closing for you, hot wrestling take. Okay. Cody Rhodes will not finish his story Boo. at WrestleMania. Boo, get out of here. Uh, uh, he will finish the story. Uh, he has I, to. I, he's going to get close, and I, I think it's going to be your boy Seth Rollins will turn on him or do something no, to mess it up. You're thinking you're, you're adding too many turns to this. It's got to be Cody. They they realized their mistake <laughs> in trying to shoehorn the rock. They didn't want to have, what was it, Royal This Rumble rock from a couple years ago. awesome, by the oh, way. It's, it's so it's great. It's fantastic. It, it, it worked The way out. they pivoted, the way they've... They pivoted from what it was go- what it seemed like it was going to be, or it was just going to be Rock and Roman, and they've pivoted to having the Rock as the heel now and trying to just badmouth Cody every chance he gets. It's perfect. It's given us a different version of Rock than we've seen in what 10, 12, 15 years at this point. Oh my gosh, it's fantastic! Yeah. It's, and it it's, seems like he's le- he's digging into this character more than he did with Black Adam or any of other, his other characters in Hollywood over the past couple of years. Well, and I think he also knows too. Like, I think the wrestling fans get it. The moment this is over, they're all going to be back on his side when they bring oh, yeah, him yeah. back as a good guy to do something. It's also great when you see him at like the. It, it's he's one of a few people that can now do this. I guess John Cena would be this way too. They get back at the WWE, they get into character, and then 24 hours later, The Rock's back being The Rock. Telling the tell it, uh, gentlemen, start your engines at the Daytona 500. Yeah, and nobody's booing them there. So it's also, you know, wrestling fans are also smart. They get the bit, but yeah, yeah, I do like Cody Rhodes. I hope he does win. I think he finishes the story. They don't want to have Philadelphia of all places just raining boos and getting <laughs> just getting absolutely mad because you know the last time they were in Philadelphia and the rock tried to raise Roman's hand it didn't go too so it didn't go so well they're not going to do that again you know what i didn't even think about that yeah you're right you're right cody will he'll finish the story johnny uh good luck this year with the minnesota united we'll all be listening 1500 espn john harrison does the pre and post match shows you also see him pretty much everywhere now because he's a uh, he's a big shot yeah i wouldn't say that what? But if it if it if that's the case, then it's all because of you you got you got me the start. Lies, lies. Whatever. I Whatever. appreciate it, buddy. Good to yeah, see you. Thanks for having me on. We'll appreciate talk. It. We'll talk to Johnny soon. Uh, Johnny, what are you on the X machine these days? If you care uh, to tell people, do we know? At John Harrison ninety J O N H A R R I S O N ninety ninety, and you'll hear him uh, this uh, Saturday 
12 30 7 p.m pre-match show that's 7 30 right. p.m uh, See, kickoff you're so much better than i am that's why i have you on here you can correct <laughs> all my mistakes talk to you soon buddy See you, buddy. That's John Harrison. I'm Ross Brendel, the Ross Brendel on the X Machine. Make sure you uh, rate and review this podcast if you're listening in audio form on the YouTube machine. Subscribe, tell your friends, let people know all about this podcast. I'll see you again uh, back in this feed here real soon. Thanks for listening to Minnesota Sports Chat. Presented by Beans Coffee Company. Use the promo code SPORTSCHAT. That's one word, SPORTSCHAT, to save at checkout. Follow Ross on X at the Ross Brendel. Like and subscribe to Minnesota Sports Chat wherever you get your podcasts. Rate and review kindly.